And we're back with some more RimWorld. And our little ice sheet gang here are doing quite nicely, except for, well, okay, there's a, you two talking about, you know what, it doesn't matter. We are back with some more of a centipedes and a little bit of a hangover, and I am looking forward to killing some stuff. Let's see, six lancers there, three pikemen there, and 12 centipedes. Well, they're all going to head towards the kill box. Problem is, we also want to deal with this failing shuttle mission. We would really like that honor. But doing both at the same time might be tricky, so we want to kill these as quickly as possible. So I think what we'll do is we'll wait till they get to about there, then get everyone into the kill box, and then it's going to be a scramble to get both of these things dealt with at the same time. Alright, let's get everyone leveled up and ready to go. Okay, we got a whole team headed over. This should be fairly simple to start. I mean, the first things is are the Lancers. They're going to get slaughtered so quickly it's going to be a joke. And you go there. Actually, some of you won't be able to see, but no, it's fine. Jeremy, get down here. See if you can get an eyeball in. Now, once those are dealt with, we'll have to take on the centipedes and such like. And how much time? We've got six hours left until the quest. Yeah, five hours. We might be able to do this just in time, even if we squeeze it a little bit there near the end. Oh, and I might want to get some EMP people. Next up, we got the pike man. They're nice and squishy and very dead. Yeah, everyone's able to get a bead. Hey, Daniel, why are you not shooting? What's wrong with you? Never mind. Quest wise, we got five hours. Okay, let's see if we can break these in the right amount of time. Uh, you start targeting there. And then you target just after him. Go for it. And we have a human leather tail cap. Well, yeah, of course we do. Uh, four hours. So we got four hours to kill all these centipedes. Well, that was almost perfect. Uh, unfortunately, one of them has decided to go for a wander, probably to attack that yeah, one of the drills. I say we teleport them back in. Yeah, we've got Skip on Ralph here. Uh, maybe get one pawn up to punch them in the face. Uh, ooh, bring everyone over. Yeah, if we could skip them close enough, we can get Ralph to... What's the range on that? Yeah, you definitely got enough range. Okay, skip time. Thank you kindly. And put skip them right to there. Uh, you might want to pull back just a little bit. A little bit of a stun might go a long way. Uh, Ralph, actually, yeah, you can you can do that as well, and you can melee attack. All right then, that went well. Uh, yeah, that expires in two hours. We'll let everyone grab a snack, and then we're going to immediately accept that quest. I'm beginning to think I put a should have put in maybe a few extra chairs there. Damn. Our team has kind of grown uh, surprisingly quickly. Well, no, it, it grew when I kind of stopped paying attention. We just have enough people to do what we needed to do, and then I stopped. Eh, quest time. Uh, everyone grab a snack. I'm pretty sure everyone else has got to rest, and we're going to have to fight off probably quite a decent-sized raid. I think we'll bring a doomsday with us as well, in case it becomes truly hairy. I think that is just about enough time there. We don't want to leave it much longer. The plan here would be to accept this for intern zero. Intern zero is an ascetic, so they're a third ascetic. We shouldn't have to worry about their requirements. Now we just got to figure out where this is landing. Shuttle has crashed. Okay, straight over here. Okay, we are going to need to get some construction done in this section. I'm thinking we stick in some barricades. The uh, most likely route for them to come from is, yeah, probably here, here, like somewhere along this edge, they're probably going to come from. They could theoretically come from up here, but I consider that unlikely. So we should probably put down some just temporary barricades to at least give our people some something to shoot from behind. Uh, give me a minute. We have queued up 15 barricades over here. We have cranked up construction on everyone by one to ensure it is completed in a timely fashion. And then everyone who is not going to be carrying steel over to that is going to start walking over. These quests normally work that you've got eight hours until the rescue shuttle arrives and four hours before that happens or halfway through, you're going to get the attack in. So we have four hours to prepare and I think we're going to carry over a doomsday. Where's our second one? Oh, yep, yeah, I dumped the second one over here. I wanted to have one doomsday on one corner of the base and one on the other just so we had a little bit of flexibility on where we could go quickly with the doomsday if needs be. And oh my god, I gotta get someone to pick up those hats at some point. We're, we're almost back up to 200 again. All right, let's let's uh, let's get the team together and get everyone moving over there. Ah, uh, look at them slowly drifting over here. Eh, slowly but surely. 
Casey and Tutvedas should be able to put down the steel necessary to build a barricade. There's only five steel per barricade, so they should be carrying enough to do the whole thing. Are you? Yeah, perfect. No, 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 no. Actually, what's your building skill? Construction of nine, that's perfect. Tutvedas, your building skill is 16. Excellent. Then in that case, you can start prioritizing that. And actually, yeah, you can start prioritizing that. I want this all done. Excellent. Then we might actually grab these over here and bring them over to this section, just in case something comes from the top. It's it's always nice to have a little bit of a backup. There we go. That looks like a lovely setup. Daryl, where are you going? Hauling steel. God damn it. That's my bad. Should have should have seen that coming. Prioritize hauling that. Yep. Bring it over there. I think we have enough people, and we even got Jeremy here sitting at the back, and we've still got an hour left before they're supposed to arrive. So, Daryl will drop that off, and then they can join the line, and I think we should be good, unless they've got lots of shield pops. If they've got lots of shield pops, then... Whoa, at this close range, that could be really awkward for us. Where's Ralph? Uh, Ralph, you could be very important when this comes down to it. They have Skip, which could be actually... Jer Sarah, you go to the back line. Ralph, we're going to want you up front. That skip ability could come in incredibly useful. Also, Berserk Pulse, if they happen to have a... Uh, actually, no, if they're close combat ones, we're not going to care too much, are we? All right, let's see what uh, what Randy's got in store for us today. We got four hours left on that quest, and I'm not seeing anyone show up just... Yep, yep, famous last words. All right, let's see what we're dealing with here. Please tell me there's no Doomsdays. Okay, no Doomsdays. They do have a minigun or two, but nothing too crazy. Okay, sniper rifle will be a problem. But so long as they get close enough, we should be able to take out most of them. Okay, that doesn't look... Awkward angle. You know what, let's uh, get some of this team and move them over here. Yeah, and Ralph, I'm going to need you there. I don't think we need Jeremy for this. We'll keep them in reserve in case something happens, but I think... I think we should be good. Uh, just assuming none of our people hit any of the... Oh, God, I forgot to check. Uh, let's check the numbers here on our enemies and see if they do have shield pops. Uh, no, not seeing anything. Let's see if any of them are, uh, would make good brawlers. What we're looking here is for some exceptional brawlers. So a tough one at... A tough and a brawler would be great, or tough and... Oh, jogger. Both of those would be good. Definitely has to have tough, though. It halves all incoming damage and makes them just so much better. And anyway, let's see. Okay, that... Looks like I have not actu activated Petro Massimo's command. Damn it, Petro. Uh, yeah, activate that if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, perfect. You can go over to there. Petro, get over here. I want to make sure everyone's getting the maximum bonus out of your rate of fire increase. Holy Jesus, I just looked away for a second. You guys are monsters. Okay, please tell me we didn't accidentally kill that guy. What's his social... Your thing... Wait, you insulted someone's diet? Okay, your log, sorry. Uh, tree hit him with an assault rifle. Oh. Did that mess up our rating with the Empire? I hope not. Yeah, never mind. Oof. Yeah, you also clipped that one. And done. Okay, so we just gotta wait four hours for the quest to complete. I think we can go home. And uh, we'll deconstruct all of this stuff here. And that should be ended. Oh, yeah, we should probably cart some of this stuff home. One good thing that came out of this is we did manage to capture a couple of prisoners. And you know what that means? Well, those prisoners are going to need executing. And it'll give everyone a nice little mood boost, so why not? I mean, it just makes life easier for everyone. No, you can't because you're not prioritized to wardening. Someone can't. Oh, damn it. Never mind. We'll find someone to execute them in no time. You know, I, I was wondering why we were getting this shuttle leaving in 12 hours. Why doesn't the guy get on board? It's because he's got hypothermia. Uh, well, I can't really blame him. It was a crash-landed scenario, so he didn't realize he was going to end up on an ice sheet. Still, it's slightly annoying. Uh, we've got Daniel on their way over. They've got a jump jet pack, so I'm hopeful they can get... Oh, yeah, we executed a couple of prisoners. Whatever. Uh, there we go. Come on, come on, come on. Right. We're going to get you to jump right there. And, damn it, can't select him. Oof, we, we'll, we'll get you there in time. What's the actual hypothermia on this guy? 86%. Seriously, stop trying to die on me. Ugh, Muppet. Fine, we're going to waste a bunch of jump jet packs to rescue you. No tent carry. Okay. Carry the guy, place in shuttle. 
and then they should get out of here. Ah, beautiful. Okay, we'll deconstruct the shuttle. Eh, what's your bio? Yeah, you got construction date. You know what? We will get you to deconstruct that while you're out here, and we will call that a successful day. And also, we'll now we're going to grab that. Yeah, we're going to sell it later. Also, you want to hide it from the drugs, the drug people. All right then, successful mission achieved. Everyone can now get back to their normal routines. Oh look, it's a toxic fallout. I haven't got one of those in ages. I find toxic fallout. I don't know if they reduced the chances of them happening, but I very rarely get them on Randy. I mean, they do happen, but much less so than on uh, just you know one difficulty below max. There, you seem to get an awful lot more toxic fallouts. This level of difficulty, you seem to get a lot more fights, but less toxic fallouts. I think I prefer the fights over the toxic fallouts. Evidence part exotic goods trader. Okay, it's just everything coming at us. Uh, Slim is in. Well, they're going through their little uh, de-aging process. Ends in 3.3 days. And let me see here. Who are we going to get to do our trading for us? The moment Casey wakes up, they're going to call Suicidal Skin Incorporated Exotic Goods Traders. Right, and even though they're called Suicidal Skin as Exotic Goods Traders, they're not going to buy our, our, our tail caps made of human skin. There's... Like, how? They're into suicidal... Oh, you know what? Never mind. It's fine. It's fine. We'll, we'll we'll find someone else to buy our hats later. We have plenty of gold to buy stuff with. And we could do with a whole bunch of things we would like. I'm going to call this a good trade. Anything that gives us two Doomsday Rocket Launchers, one Psychic Shock Lance, one Insanity Lance, and a bunch of Neutron. I mean, yeah, yeah, that, that's going to be a win. Uh, they still won't buy our tail caps, unfortunately. But hey, what can you do? And I'm never selling the works. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to use them for fights and stuff, but we'll figure something out. Now I just got to figure out where I'm going to store the extra doomsdays. I was storing one in here and then I realized that that's, um, that's really dangerous because of this area being, you know, really vitally important to us. So I'd rather not have explosives that could go off. So I think over here and oh, need two more, probably in storage over here. No, not near the power batteries. That's a bad idea. Anyway, with the early stuff dealt with, what is our plan for today? Well, the plan for today is to get everyone helmets. I want to get everyone a cataphract helmet of excellent quality or better. And then once they've all got helmets, they'll all look this perfectly white color. I mean, look at Casey there. They are just mm, perfection. They look like a, well, everyone's describing them as yetis. They look like yetis. It's amazing. Oh, this guy seems to be talking to a lot of people. I don't like, oh God. He's now friends with Casey, Daryl, Charlie, Gregos, Petrobet. No! He's made friends with a whole bunch of people. We can't... Ah, uh, that means everyone's going to be sad when he dies. Yeah, I don't care. They're non-violent. I am not keeping a non-violent... Like, if you're incapable of violence, you're not allowed in here. I am sorry. It's just no. It's not going to happen. Daryl, stop talking to the fresh meat. God. Oh, I might be better off just killing them now. I was going to wait until they were better and then kill them off. But if they're going to make friends with everyone, I think we might be better off... Uh, hmm giving them the slip sooner rather than later. What's the easiest way to get rid of them without damaging our morale too much? Well, the first thing we're going to do to cut down on problems is we're going to remove the tongue. I have never had a chance to use this before. I've never wanted to use this before, but I'm thinking stopping them from talking to everyone is probably all in our best interests. Uh, no, Sky. Yeah, and oh my God, we're getting diverse thoughts because they're of a different religion as well. Well, they're... My organ was hard. It's your tongue. That's... Is it an organ? Actually, is it someone's tongue tech? I mean, I know it's a bit of you, but... Mm, you know what? I'm not going to get into involved in the semantics of it. Doesn't make a difference. That should stop everyone socializing with them, and once it fades down a bit, we can get rid of them without too much problems, hopefully. Another set of new lovers. We've got Tree and Valiant. Uh, do we have you sharing beds with anyone? Okay, Tree, we don't. Valiant, we do. Oh, yeah, we can... I think we can take Valiant out of that bed. We take Valiant out. That leaves Jarek, and he has, well, four other choices. So, uh, you know, I think I'm going to have to do an inventory here and find out what's going on, just so I could, I could assign people out to optimal beds. Or I need to install a mod and start... Yeah, actually, there's a mod that allows us to put in five-part beds so we could stick five people in the same bed. Might be a little bit weird, but... Uh, hmm, might be interesting. Let me just check some things here. Actually, this is too confusing. Uh, oh, damn it. I was going to wait until Slim got out of the pod uh does that still work i think that will pause while they're in there but they shouldn't get you know it shouldn't kill them or anything well that's the hope and why am i heating up that room that seems like an incredible waste of resources let's just uh, designate a power toggle on that 
All right. Uh, also, we're probably going to want to harvest everything we possibly can in here. Uh, actually, oh, it actually hit at a decent point where there was nothing left. Okay, there's a few things worth left harvesting. Oh, we're actually doing really good on food. We're up to a thousand spare rice. I'm, I'm going to have to let some of that rot, I think. Uh, oh, and while that's going on, we might as well start the ceremony over here. Well, there was a ceremony we wanted to do for Intern 4. They are now up to Freeholder. Yeah, in fact, let's just finish their steel meditation tone and try and get it done in here first. All right, we have got them their own throne room, but the thing is, they might not land here. That's the weird thing about these quests. Like, if we accept, where is it, the yeoman ceremony here, they might have it in there, or they might just do it in here, which is our normal room. And... Why did you land there? This place is perfectly... Oh, no power. Alright, now try and get in here quick and don't freeze to death. Oh, it's minus 64 outdoors, and probably about the same indoors, because, you know... Well, we don't heat the whole building, that's just a waste of resources. Uh, in turn zero, get over here now. We want you to begin bestowing ceremony immediately. Yep, everyone's invited. The whole team. Yep, we're going to do it in here. Excellent. Honorable bestowing ceremony. Everyone gets a little bit of happiness. Uh, gained their first silent level. And what did they get out of it? Well, bearing their Vanic Spine and all that. They got Solar Pinhole. That's actually not the worst. Uh, generates a microscopic slipgate. Basically, it allows you to illuminate and warm a surrounding area. This is pretty handy. Hmm. Hey, right, well, never mind. Everyone back to work. And hopefully that guy makes it out of here without collapsing. Come on. You can do it. Your your hypothermia is only minor. You don't have any health conditions. Hey, and the other two are... Yeah, no, you'll probably make it. Right, excellent. Let's get back to crafting ourselves some Yeti helmets. One thing I forgot to do a while back was Sarah here. Or is she consuming a simple meal? Uh, Sarah, ha we actually got her up to level 5 on the Psycast, and I forgot to assign her out the Skip Psycast. It's just a very, very useful skill to have, and I think it's the level 4. Yeah, it's a level 4 skill, so we should have given that to her ages ago. Um, I just realized something. All of our corpses are rotting. Yeah, I think the toxic fallout, it's, uh, it's basically destroyed them all. Well, that's annoying. We're going to have to live on thrombo meat. Uh, that could be awkward. I was kind of depending on that to get us all the way through the winter. And it's only starting on the winter, and we're not going to get any more human raids because it's too cold outside. We're going to hope for a quest to come along. I mean, we should be able to survive on the thrombo corpses. There's enough meat in them. And we can make enough simple meals out of the rice if we truly desperately need to. Plus, we... We do have 224 packet survival meals, 110 carnivore fine meals, and we do have 105 regular fine meals. So we're not going to starve, but this is uh, inconvenient. For our next set of fun, we've got a psychic ship. Well, that's going to be awkward. Uh, second. Hmm. I think... I think we just mortar it into oblivion. We have some very good people with some very good aim. So I say we bring everyone back inside, zone them into this area, and then we just mortar it until all of this is gone. And once the psychic droner is gone, the rest of them should flow into our kill box and naturally get annihilated. Now, to do this shooting, we want to use the best shooters possible. Uh, when they updated this, they made it so that shooting skill now affects mortar usage, I think up to a certain point at least. So we're going to get all three of these to set force target on this. It uh, won't fire because they're set to hold fire. That's okay. And then we're going to let them loose. Now, hopefully they've got pretty good accuracy. And our doors over here are open. Everyone is set to be inside. And why are those grenades in the doorway? There's always something. Okay, we'll get those out of the doorway anyway. How's this shot going? Ooh, they're pretty tightly clustered. And completely missed. That's, um... Guys, you're like super good shots. How do you mess that up so bad? And we'll have to be careful here as well because we're going to get a bit of toxic buildup while they're out here. And off you go again. Okay, 67%. That's pretty good. So say uh, four more volleys and we should be done. How are our mortar barrels looking? Yeah, they got 11 left on each one of them. Come on. And complete misses with the sec... Well, I can see this is being awkward. Uh, 
how many mortar shells we got left? 18. Hmm. We might want to increase production of those. Seriously? It's down to... Just, just one more hit, guys. One more hit and you can all come back inside. How are you all looking? Minor, minor, initial... I know, yeah, grand. Come on. You got this. No, that's a miss. That's... God damn it. Hey, on the bright side, you've killed a bunch of these and injured a bunch more. One more volley. Come on, just one more volley. Yes, that is enough. Uh, we will put you on... We are going to put you all on hold fire. A whole lot of you. Ah, perfect. Anyway, here they come, and out of this we get one advanced component, one regular component, and ten plasteel. Ah, uh, well, we'll let everyone back to work, and uh, we'll bring them around to the kill box for annihilation. Well, the early ones got, well, quickly slaughtered. We didn't really need a lot to kill them, but uh, these ones will be a little bit tougher. Uh, firing, and firing. There we go. Why are they going around? They should be stunned and unable to get around each other. Oh, there we go. That one's going to block the way, so we should hopefully be able to... Hmm. I'm not liking the f smaller amount of people that are firing. How about if you go there? That actually helps out. Perfect. That gets us just a little bit more firepower down range, because those centipedes take a hell of a pounding. And that one in the corner is taking zero pounding while stunned. Uh, can you guys actually shoot that? Uh, okay, well, damn it. We will clear your prioritization list, you guys. Back to shooting as normal. You guys? Okay, we're good, we're good. It's just that one there is immune to stuns now, and we need that thing dead soon. Oh, Sarah. Front and center, sorry. Uh, we need you to skip that back there. Whew. There we go. So all you need is someone up front with the skip ability. Any of them get a little bit too close, skip them back. Well, okay, in this instance, we were lucky. We had, like, the space at the back to dump them into. But that seems to be working out quite nicely. And, yeah, they got enough neural heat to do this a second time if needs be. Uh, let's skip this forward. I think we got him dead. Uh, I think we can call that a success. All right. Everyone back to work. Uh, we'll get you to your guns back as well. Well, great. A psychic drone high female. I think I'm, I should really be keeping an eye out for tinfoil hats, but none of them have showed up yet in the last while. Or maybe I missed them. I need to maybe update my shopping wish list. For now, to keep everyone sane, well, all the females sane, we're going to have to dose them full of beer, uh, ambrosia, psychic tea, and smoke leaf joints if necessary, just to keep them all from going crazy. Oh, and I should really sort out the bedrooms. When's Slim out? Slim's out in seven hours, then I'll actually do up a spreadsheet and figure out what way these relationships are working, because right now it's, it's killing me trying to figure out who's supposed to go in what bed. Well, one thing we don't need is all of these corpses now. Yeah, that toxic fallout really did a number. I should have remembered that it did that, but in all fairness, I've never really run a colony this... Um... God damn it, Gus. What? What? Have I... Have I... No, I don't have a home zone here, so why don't you just get out of there now? There you go, you muppet. Ugh. Come on, so, someone put that guy out before he runs into more fire. Idiot. We are going to have to roof these over. It's, uh, yeah, Randy keeps trying to put out the fires. Now, Slim over here. Here's the thing. I was thinking we should figure out the social situation. So the way we're going to do this is... Right, to make this straight in my head, we're going to... Slim is going to be the, the key point to start, anyway. Just to figure out where we're at at first, we'll see how big their relationship pool is, and then we'll, we'll move on from there. So they are husband to Jarek Dane. So then what we want to do is put them into a little bit of a spreadsheet, and then take Jarek's lovers and stuff, and add that. Okay, there's Valiant Slim. Ah, uh, give me a minute. So, here we have Slim. Slim is going out as either a lover, husband, wife, whatever, of Jarek Dane. Then what we do, we add in Jerick Dane beneath them, so those two are definitely a couple, and then on the right here you can see Jerick is dating Flatman Slim, because, you know, that's the thing, and then they're also going out with Unbreakable, Simone, and Valiant. So if we put those two in a room, it would definitely still be, you know, just, just one happy love room. But then what we have to do is grab Unbreakable and put them in there. That means Unbreakable is dating Jerick Dane, but only Jerick Dane. There, there's actually no one else they're dating. And uh, then we grab Simone... Samoan, Samoan, whatever. They're dating Jarek as well. 
which is also a dead end. There's no one else in that tree, which leaves only Valiant. Fortunately for us, Valiant is, well, yeah, they're a little bit loose morals. Wonderful person. Wonderful for this, anyway. They're also dating Jerick, but they're also dating Tree 3 and D. Delaire. Uh, unfortunately, 3 is, yeah, also a bit of a dead end. Despite being called 3, they're only dating one person, which is Valiant, uh, so that's sort of a dead end. But, on the bright side, D. Delaire is not just dating Valiant, they're also dating Jeremy and Gus. Which means that that adds Jeremy to the pool as well. Which, yeah, just, just so we're keeping track here, all of these names here, they're all technically in one big love puddle. Uh, I believe the correct term is called a polycule by uh, people in the comments. Uh, you learn something new every day. It's amazing what you learn with video games. Anyway, Jeremy, unfortunately, is also a dead end. Uh, that's a pity, but we've still got Gus, and Gus, fortunately, is not a dead end. Gus is, is very much a live end, because they're also, not just dating Delair, they're also dating Casey and Shirley, which gives us two extra people to add into this, like, increasing love puddle. Then, we've got Charlie. Dead end, unfortunately. But, Casey brings it all back to life by also dating Sarah and Ralph. Right, so, Sarah, they actually are not a dead end, they're also dating Intern Zero, and Ralph, also not a dead end, which is like, this is the first time we've had someone who's, like, like for example, Jerick over here, they're dating four, four people in total, but three of the four people were all dead ends, and only one extending it. So it's, it seems like there's always only, like, one person who extends it, there's just dead ends everywhere. But in the case of Casey, Sarah, and Ralph, all of them are actually in some weird, you know what, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. So Intern Zero and Daryl need to be added to the list. Intern Zero, actually, dead end. Well, they're kind of relatively new. They'll, they'll, they'll put themselves out there more. I'm sure they'll be fine. Uh, however, Daryl over here, they're actually dating Petro Massimo as well. So expanding our pool even further, we've got Petro Massimo. And Petro Massimo, not a dead end. They're dating Daryl as well as Grey Ghost. So we get to add Grey Ghost into it. And Grey Ghost is, unfortunately, a dead end. So, that, so that's it. That's the, the main group there. They're all in a relationship. Only those members of the group all can, you know, be traced back in some way, shape, or form to Slim. Which means how many people are not in a relationship yet? And that would be Daniel and Totvidas. Daniel and Totvidas, neither of them in any relationships whatsoever yet. So what does all this mean, bar an enormous headache? Well, I'm going to put Fat Man Slim into storage for the time being to do uh, lots and lots of regening, which means Jerick's going to be a little bit free. So I thought we would pair up Jerick and Simone, Valiant and Tree, D. Delaire uh, and Jeremy, Gus and Casey, Sarah and Intern Zero, Ralph and Daryl, Petra and Grey Ghost, and that leaves Charlie and Unbreakable alone. I couldn't find some way of pairing them off with someone, which is unfortunate. Charlie is in a weird position as well. I could theoretically pair them up with Gus, but that would leave Casey with no one or Petra you know what? It's fine. It just means if we take the Daniel and Totvidas out of the room and just leave the beds for all of these, it should be classified as a bedroom. In theory. Because these are technically all one group of lovers. Yep. Yep. It, it totally works. I took out the two boys and, well, Mokatan, whatever their name was, uh, the, the, the person that's unconscious, and it's one big happy bedroom. All right. That means everyone should get a massive bonus now from being in there. Where is it? Uh, come on, give me a second. All right, I think, I think it worked, right? Cabin fever. Okay, well, everyone's got cabin fever because there's toxic fallout outside. Just don't go outside and you'll be fine. Uh, quite comfortable, extremely impressive rec room, extremely comfortable dining room. Oh, come on. No, never mind. I must be missing something here. They're not even getting a barracks bonus. Is, is this a bedroom or is it not? Yeah, it's Charlie's and Ralph's bedroom? Why is it only those two's bedroom? Okay, okay. So Unbreakable has an extremely impressive bedroom. Jarek Dane still has, where is it? Extremely impressive barracks, which wears out. Uh, oh, and Casey and Gus are enjoying their new accommodations. Let's see what happens to Jarek's though. Extremely impressive barracks. Do they get extremely impressive bedroom? You know what? I'm going to leave it a, a little bit. We've, we've got a little bit of time while we're still waiting for this toxic fallout to wear away. Also, it's time to maybe incinerate some more corpses. Oh god, feeding the wargs is going to become problematic. We may have to do a population call. I really do not want to have to do a population call on the wargs. They're like, they're pretty much our sacred animal and I don't want to kill them. Uh, we may have to find some way to feed them though. And 
into the dead of winter, we may have to take extreme measures. Oh, damn it. New lovers. Like, I just figured this out, guys. This is not helping. Oh, okay, I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet and see how this plays out. Hopefully, Charlie and... Sm mm, actually, this works out really well in our favor. Uh, Charlie has now hooked up with Samao. Right, so somehow on Charlie, yeah, that, that's that's great, and Charlie, yeah, well, okay, it's completely messed up our system, but that's fine, because right now Samau is sleeping with Jarek. Now what we can do is get Samau and hook them up with Charlie, who's currently alone, they're not actually in a bed with anyone, so if we get Charlie and Samau, and, oh god, this is going to be messy, oh, just, you know, bear with me here, so, yeah, we get those two together, we get rid of Jarek out of there, so now Jarek is, yeah, yeah, whatever. Jarek is not on the board with uh, Samau, so they're alone. But Jarek is also doing Unbreakable, who's alone. So now Jarek and Unbreakable can be put into the same bed, which means no one's alone anymore. Yep, I, I think we've got them all together. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense in my head. I'm, I'm just going to try it and see if it works. Ha! Still a barracks. Perfect. So now everyone's in a relationship. Well, okay, Slim's going to be not sharing a bit. Okay, we need an even number of colonists. We need one more colonist to even out the team. Uh, is it legendary work? Uh, whatever. Cataphract helmet. Ooh, cataphract helmet. And uh, new lovers. That's fine. Critical alert. Major break risk. Yeah, well, we're in the middle of some problems here. Uh, get rid of that for a second. Ralph, what is wrong with you? Well, the high psychic drone's probably not helping. Gathering plasteel hauling to inventory. No, no, I think you're going to grab a beer, buddy. Uh, or unless you've already... You've already done beer. Well, if it gets bad enough, maybe we should... You know what? Just just go and drink some psychite tea. That'll sort you right out. Okay, then. Now we just got to survive the rest of this high psychic drone. But I think now that everyone's in a single relationship, that should... Or... Wait a minute. Uh, we should probably uninstall those beds. What's it like in here? Yeah, still an extremely impressive barracks, which I don't like. Uh, guys, get rid of those beds. All right, no longer a barracks gets back to a bedroom. Having those uh, those beds in there, even though they weren't in use, was what was driving it into barracks territory. Now we just have to get both Daniel and Totvidas in on this. Now, people are still talking to Mokutan, but Mokutan can't talk back, so their social with everyone is now much better, meaning only two people are still friends with them, which is great when they inevitably have an accident that we don't need to worry about it. And there is just one very happy colony right there. I cannot believe this worked out. All right, thank you, Randy, for that. That, that... Oh, come on! <sighs> Fine, I'll go back to the spreadsheet, but I'm, I'm not... Unless something changes, I'm not including any updates here. This is just insanity. You know, it doesn't change things that much. Uh, most of those people were already in relationships. They don't need new ones. But uh, it does take Daryl up to the point where they now have four relationships, which ties them with Jarek for being, like, you know, the most loose of the entire colony. Um... Good, good job, Daryl. Uh, I mean, congratulations, whatever's. You know, even though we live on a sunblocked, climate-adjusted, volcanic-wintered, toxic fallout tile, it's still a pretty good life. I mean, no one's really that sick. It's a little bit of toxic buildup here and there, but nothing too major. I mean, they've got a pretty good standard of living. Uh, though we are starting to run out of fresh meat, we're going to have to do something about that. Uh, we, we can always hope that a quest shows up that we can utilize to our advantage. Oh. This event just went off. This discharges all of our batteries, which could be problematic for us if there was low wind, which there is low wind. Thank you, Randy. Okay, designate power toggle. Where's the nearest person? Jeremy, get over. Nope, nope. Uh, I want you to prioritize flicking that power switch before. Yep, you can see everything starting to flicker. Boom, power switch goes on and power's back online. Now, the way that all works is just, well, there's, this was a separate grid, as that it wasn't affected by the Zist event. The Zist event could only affect one of the grids. So it only affected this one, this one zapped over here. Now it could in theory have affected this grid and wiped out our backup batteries, as in, you know, caused a power thing there, but well then it would have protected our main grid anyway, so it doesn't really matter. In fact, it might be an idea to just make one power grid with a huge amount of power wires just to act as a decoy, but yeah, that's just an awful lot of steel and sounds like an awful lot of effort. Hey right, guys, go... Uh, why is that? Is that even in the zone? Yeah, it seems I zoned a whole bunch of power cables. You know what? I trust past me. They probably knew what they were doing. Um, but I've turned off all the mines. I, I stopped people from going outside as much as possible. We don't want them in this toxic fallout until it's gone away. We're already at five days. I think they're limited to 12 days at this point. So hopefully something happens. And it's that 
It's the type of raid that gives you brand trousers moments. Haywire drop pods. Um, right. Everyone get to... I think here's probably our best bet. Uh, yeah, just get there for now. Now let's see where the pods are dropping. Where are you dropping? Oh, are you kidding me? You're all outside? I, all of them dropped outside. You can see it up here on the map. Nothing actually landed inside our base. Oh... Yeah, the closest one was this one right there. Excellent. And why does someone have... Oh, Mokatan, never mind. I was just looking, wondering why someone had tattered apparel. It was our uh, currently paralytic abrasia person. We could cure them, but I, I don't really want to waste the medicine. I'd prefer to just feed them gruel while we wait for them to recover naturally and then uh, kill them later. All right, we need to get people to the kill box fairly zippily. Reason being, these guys are going to like dive straight in there, and if they're scythers, that could be a problem. Let's get a team together. We're not even going to take the whole team for this. We're going to take about 14 people to take care of the problem over here. And uh, the rest of you can actually go back to sleep or work or... Well, whatever you were doing. We've set you zone so you shouldn't cause any issues. Uh, oh, centipede, centipede. How many centipedes is that? Come on. Okay, so we've got a lot of centipedes. Only nine. Eh, nine's a fair decent amount. And we've got some scythers. Yeah, no, this is grand. This is not so bad at all. It could be an awful lot worse. Nine centipedes. Yeah, we can take them. Well, here comes our snacks. Uh, why are you two stop? Never mind. They were overlapping for some reason. You start firing. And you start firing as well. Perfect. Oh, not quite. Ah, there we go. Excellent. Now, what I've tried to do is place the people with the highest firing skill as far away from the shooting as possible, so these two don't get activated until the, if unless the centipedes make it in a distance. Everyone else except for Valiant here is getting activated quite early. Oh, actually no, Jeremy, pull back. I want Valiant in there getting some valuable shooting experience. I just want the people with the worst shooting skill, and that's what I sorted by this time around, so that everyone can get their shooting skills up. Uh, hopefully. Now I know this is facing off against centipedes, but they are one of the best training dummies. They have so many hit points, and it takes so long to kill them that everyone's probably going to max out their shooting experience for the day before this is over. Um, hmm, that's assuming we kill them all. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, they're, we've got this portion controlled. One mistake I made here, I put people with variable sh grenade rates here. I've got a careful shooter and a regular shooter. The careful shooter is basically... I was trying to stagger the grenades. One goes off, then one goes off like halfway through the reload of the other. Uh, unfortunately, I used a careful shooter, which in this instance, it was fine. There was a few enough enemies that this wasn't a problem. But what's happening was the grenades were starting to overlap, as in the two of them were going off at the same time, leaving a big gap for the centipedes to start running forward. That was not nice. But we've only got two left. We'll take care of them and there'll be problem over. And we can see here from... Yeah, they've maxed out their shooting learning from the day. In fact, everyone should have pretty much maxed it out. Yeah, this was some very valuable shooting experience. Ooh, I get a fair bit more. New lovers. <sighs> okay, in turn zero and unbreakable. No, no, we don't need to change anything. Uh, the only people we care about right now are Daniel, Talti, and Totvidas. They're the only ones that, need to, that can be added in. And, yep, yeah, problem sorted. We can go scrap them up and we'll be good to go. Now we just need some humans to show up or a quest that will give us some humans. Thinking about this food problem we're currently experiencing, we're going to have to get some fresh meat for those wargs soon. Otherwise, things are going to start getting, um, well, carnivorous between them. So I think I have an idea. There is a quest here. It's the Arconexus one. Wait, no, not the Arconexus one. The worship terminal? Yes. This would give us access to some tribals, at least nearby, and I think we might be able to get the... Oh, second. I think we'll wait till everyone gets some sleep, and then we'll uh, have a quick check. Oh, and the ash has settled. That means the volcanic winter is over. It'll mean it'll get slightly warmer outside. It's only minus 70. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. Oh, and everyone's getting the full bonus now from the bedroom. If we check on their needs, they should be getting uh, extremely impressive bedroom plus six, even though they're all in one bedroom. I love it. I love it. This has been working out perfectly. All right, first thing in the morning, though, uh, we're going to go on a little jaunt. Actually, first thing in the morning, we're going to call that combat supplier. I think we can get our hands on some more. How many doomsdays have we got already? Four? Yeah, I think four. Yeah, we can go with almost six. Assuming they've got any to sell. While we're here, we're actually going to pick up a prestige cataphract helmet. That will come in very handy for one of our casters. 
Uh, so, barring that, there's nothing really too good here. Uh, tech print for artificial metabolism, and that's it. We'll sell them off some of our leftover scraps. And done. Now, I'm thinking Ralph could probably do with the most benefit from that helmet. And we've got our transport pods loaded. What we've done here is we have stuck four pawns in here. And their plan is we're, we're going on a meat run. We need a whole bunch of fresh corpses to replace the ones that got destroyed in the toxic fallout. Yes, I know, my bad, but this is that wor Worshipful Village quest. Uh, actually, we can drop in the center. They're going to be friendly to us at the start, at least. You see, when it comes to this quest, we have to go down, hack a terminal, and you can sneak in and do it. Or you can not sneak in. I think we're going to be going with the not-so-sneaky approach this time around. And, yep, yeah, let's see what we're dealing with here. How many enemies? Sorry, not enemies yet. 20. Well, I was expecting about 10. Uh, where's everyone landing? Okay, my bad. I shouldn't have come through the reef. Please don't get annoyed by that. Everybody out. Run, 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 run. Uh, is there any... Damn it, there are multiple entrances and exits and all of those. I want to find a place where we can, uh, well, basically butcher them. Uh, yeah, up here seems good. We're going to head up this direction, and I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to send along a couple more people. I would be more comfortable if we had maybe eight people here handling this. Four is not enough. Eight is safer. So, plan here is quite simple. We're going to stay at maximum range. We are going to pop Petra Massimo's command. We are going to use our range and firepower to slaughter all the tribals. And then we're going to take the fresh meat home. Uh, also, we'll probably hack the terminal while we're here. Uh, Petro, we're going to want you in the middle. Casey, yeah, you can, you can get out of the way there. Perfect. Uh, we just got to get someone to activate them. Uh, let's attack a wall, maybe. Yeah, we're just... A I don't want to be close enough to the sandbags that they can use them for cover. Well, that was quick. All right, they're all hostile. Uh, where's Petro? Petro. I think now is the time. Yeah, that's exactly what we're hoping for. Oh, I should also point out, uh, this village we're at, it's in range of the sun blocker, so we don't have to worry about that ever being a problem. Also, the climate adjuster, but yeah, that's not really much help. Oh, guys, come on, spread out that firepower a bit. I don't like them getting as close as they are. Nope. Oh, why have they not broken yet? Oh, I don't think they break. This is their village. They're not going to run from it. Okay, area is now safe. Excellent. Charlie, how are you doing? That is a cut from a great bow on the right leg. Who's got good medical? Actually, that's probably Casey. Uh, nope, damn it. Never mind. Petra's got this. So, I think Petra's next thing will be to hack this ancient terminal once they're finished. We just, uh, this has basically provided us with a bunch of fresh meat. That's 19 human corpses. Uh, are you worth capturing? Careful shooter, quick sleeper. Nah. Uh, any animals on this tile? Uh, none. Well, I suppose we are in the middle of the ice sheet. Done. Alright, everyone go with them. And uh, we're going to be getting out of here quite shortly. There we go. Terminal hacked. You've collected information and can now leave. Ooh. Ooh, there's enemy reinforcements in 0 0.9 hours. I mean... 20... Filling the fridge with 20 people is good, but more is better. Uh, let's maybe free ourselves up some uh, mobility room. Yeah, I'd like to be able to get to each side. This way we should be able to... I want to basically be able to run all the way to the top left. Top, bottom, left, or right through channels. Yeah, here's good. I mean, a few shortcuts can't hurt. Okay, doors open all round. Everyone get in the middle. Where are the enemies going to come from? Five, four, three, two, one. Actually, how big are the enemies going to be? Oh, wow. Maybe I should have left. Uh, we can't flee, can we? Nope, can't reform caravan while they're here. We could run towards the edge of the map, but... That is an awful lot of fridge food. Uh, yeah, that... How, ooh, how many are close combat? Ooh, that's a lot of close combat there. Oh, they're all close combat. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid we're going like... Full nut job on this one. I want it all. Uh, should we bring more people? No, yeah, they can handle this. Uh, f mm, this might destroy some corpses, what we're about to try next, but I think needs must as the devil drives and such like. So, Aerodrone Salvo. Yeah. 
thinking right there is good. Yeah. Like I said, we might lose a few corpses. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Ooh, I should probably do a quick check. Maybe they've got some people we would like to recruit. What kind of traits you got going on? Any tough with any other good traits? No. Nope. Wow, you are not the best. All right, everyone. Now, remember, they are going to try and close the distance. How many is there? 37. We have eight. Hmm. Damn it, they're pretty fast and pretty deadly. If things get bad, we can always run off the edge of the map. I would just prefer not to. Oof, damn it, this is awkward. Berserk Pulse. Yeah, I'm thinking... Ralph's got it. Eh. Hit that guy there. That will slow some of them down and they'll let buy us a little bit more time. I'm going to have to do a little bit of you know, incy bincy micromanagement here just to make sure that we don't die, but so long as we do this right, we should be fairly okay. 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 That worked. How much meat we got this time around? Uh, 90. You know what? There's another hour. I don't think we want to wait any longer. I think that's as much as we need to claim. Ooh. Brought us a bunch of jade. Thank you kindly. And are any of you worth keeping alive? I mean, we might as well look. We've got a gourmand, slothful, greedy. Oof. And they're dead in seven hours. And we got one who's dead in seven hours who's a careful shooter, quick sleeper. Yeah, that's all. Over. Ooh, wow. And we got a few more over here. Hmm. You know what? Not going to worry about it. <laughs> what we're going to do now is, is the whole reason we came here. We are going to reform the caravan. And... The thing is, because... Oh, there's like a whole bunch of prisoners. We will take the lot. Why not? Now, the thing is, you would think we won't be able to carry all those corpses. Well, technically, since this is a combat tile, we can take as much weight as we like. It just means we won't be able to move when we get out of there. We're already like the... There we go. We are over a thousand kilos. Not even a shuttle can carry a thousand kilos. So this is going to be way more than we should ever be possibly allowed to move. Now, give me a minute while I select everything. So we took 5,622 kilos of weight. Uh, as well as that, we took all of their chairs, because of course we did. We're not leaving the chairs behind. And we didn't leave... Pretty, the only thing we left behind were the tainted clothing. Well, all their clothing, we don't care about it. And their weapons. I don't really see the point of melting those down. We've got enough for all of that. But everything else, we took the lot. And boom. Quest complete. Now, second. Get rid of all of that. That gives us the worship terminal, but it also leaves us with a completely immobilized caravan. However, we do have fire skip. And we also have a transport shuttle on Sarah, so either would do, but I think fire skip is more renewable, so let's see if that works. Immobilize too much weight. Oh, it doesn't work, does it? Yeah, fire skip. I was hoping fire skip would work, but it seems the immobilization thing is a problem for them. However, transport shuttle. That, it seems, completely unaffected. I'm pretty sure that's an oversight. At some point, they're going to fix it. Um, actually, this would be closer want to land it as close as possible to our storage site. There seems perfectly fine. Now, done. They're all going to fly in and land right there. We're going to have to drag all those corpses in undercover, though. We have roofed in that area, though I should probably shrink the zone a bit so some of the areas I haven't roofed in correctly don't end up with corpses getting destroyed. But yes, there. That should allow us to store all our fresh corpses right there and not have any worries about the toxic fallout causing any more problems. Oh, we've also got a few prisoners. Oof. Yeah. Prisoner, maybe just execute that one. They've only got 0 0.8 hours. There's no point in letting them live. Because we managed to finish that quest, we've actually found the relic the little corpus. Uh, jump to location. Okay, so there it is. The chalice is over there. That means... Ooh. I do want to get my hands on a relic. I've never got my hands on one of those before because I've never been bothered, but uh, I would like to get my hands on that legendary charge rifle. And there's a marriage on. D. Dallaire told Gus that he wants to spend his life with her. Gus agreed and the two are now engaged. I don't even know if the two of them are sleeping in the same bed. Um, 
I'm through for a second. D Delair, uh, no, no, uh, Gus is sleeping in that bed. D whatever, I can't keep track of the kids these days. Oh my god, it's mental. <laughs> I feel like maybe we cheated the system a bit here. That shuttle appears to be very, very full of things. That is, uh, that's a lot. And there we go. I think, I think that worked out quite nicely. That is much, much better. We now have at least a, a stockpile of corpses for the winter. Which is, okay, kind of half over, and disease infection. Oh, and we've got a bunch of prisoners here. Not sure what I'm going to do with them just yet. We might keep one or two. I'm just thinking we do need one more person to sort of complete our, complete this to perfection, where we can also have Slim in there, but uh, Slim's still going to be in storage for a while longer. We sort of want to de-age them an awful lot, but if there's, like, there's a couple, there's one good one here. Was it a trigger-happy iron-willed night owl? I mean, yeah, I mean, why not? Ooh, staggering ugly teetoter. Uh, sanguine. It just... No, the reason I don't like those is the Staggering Ugly just makes people hate them. Uh, which is going to be harder to get them into the, the love puddle. Uh, the Pyromaniacs, well, yeah, obviously hats, material. Gorbon, Slotful... Oh, come on! But Zala here might work out. No major health conditions, barring, you know, getting shredded by machine gun fire, but we can fix that. Uh, guys, do you want to wanna hold the last of those corpses before the, uh, the toxic fallout kicks in? No, 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 no. You are going to keep prioritizing until it's time to go to bed. Uh, actually, I'm going to get a few people in. I want to make sure that it all gets done before the toxic fallout contaminates the bodies. Why so many exotic goods traders? Do, do they, I feel like over half of them, about two thirds of our traders are exotic goods traders, though maybe that's just my imagination. Anyway, they're the only ones that don't buy our hats, which is mildly annoying, but hopefully they'll still have some good stuff. Poison synthesis is the only tech print we haven't got our hands on, so I kind of have to. Ooh, word of inspiration. Oh, damn, that's... I would really like some invisibility, though. Bit of a spending spree. We sold off some wake-up and beer, flat-screen television, psychic shock lance, insanity lance, sight trainer, word of inspiration, tech print, and a bunch of neutronomy. Uh, the flat-screen television is because, well, I should have got around to that a while ago. We, we should really give them something else to do with their time. I right, just gotta figure out somewhere to put it where they can watch it while having seats. Yeah. I was having a lovely time, just, you know... Getting, getting things done, getting everyone's helmets upgraded, the usual. Don't even realize this. Security threats activated in 1.8 days. Alright, I think we need to hit this relic complex quickly. Otherwise, the security threats will activate. Uh, time to get a team together. I'm thinking we go, we send the full eight people, replace the transport pods afterwards so we can send in the other, another eight if needs be. Uh, let me get everyone loaded up. After doing a bit of checking, I've picked these eight pawns to be the tip of the spear. They're the ones that are going to be going in first. I uh, will accept all of those. And they're going to load up into the transport pods. And inspired creativity on a break hole. That's, uh, like, what do we even do again? Intellectual, uh, yeah, that's not going to be very useful to you. Anyway, uh, everyone get into the pods. You're about to get launched. Loaded up, ready to go. All right, relic complex. Uh... Let's drop at the edge. I've never been to one of these, and we need to be careful. I have no idea what we're going to be facing. Okay, let's do this. Oop, maybe... Still let down a teensy-weensy bit. What the...? Okay, Scyther, Scyther, Scyther. Not really a problem? They're not asleep, are they? Oh, they are asleep. That's the edge? That... That's the edge. Okay. Hmm. Uh, right. Okay, back home. I would like this to be built. Uh, give me the numbers. Actually, no. Give me work schedule. Uh, construct? Yeah, let's just crank that up a chunk. Uh, and then make sure everyone's on board for doing construction. Stop whatever you're doing. And if you're not doing it, start constructing. We're probably going to need reinforcements in a bit. Now, so, do we start shooting at them, which will activate probably the ones inside as well? That is the question. Hmm. I think we do. I think I would prefer to activate them now. Uh, we can position ourselves well. Uh, right about there is good. Uh, they are... Scythers. Perfect. The thing is, I'm afraid if I open the door, I'm going to activate them as well, so... Uh, security threat activated in 1.7 days. Grand. Guys? Wow, an entire volley didn't kill that guy. I can take a hell of a pounding sometimes. You just basically have to hit them enough to incapacitate them, and just sometimes that does not work out. Ok, 
Okay, area is now safe. You can reform your caravan on the world map. But I feel like it's not so safe as I'd like it to be. All right. Uh, no, Petra's not opened the door. To there. I'm going to claim that door. I'm going to lock it open. What do you got? Oh. Okay. Seriously? Uh... Like, we could just nick that? In fact, uh, let's close that door behind us. Oh, okay. Hmm. Sarah, get there. We may need a, a very quick evac. Ooh, okay, okay. To there. Extract prime rifle to inventory. Five seconds. Hmm. Oh yeah, you guys are taking a nap. Okay, so it's all eight, but I think, I think we're good. Extract it. Come on. Come on. Okay, was that it? Uh, we can just reform the caravan and leave. Did I miss something? I was expecting this to be terrifyingly dangerous. Uh, we could just, we could uh, deconstruct this. It's probably worth a bit with marble and things, but, uh, no, I think we're just going to leave. That was, uh, e easy peasy. All right, then. Uh, let's get out of here. Now, it would take 1.9 days to make it home, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to fire skip. Yeah, uh, did everyone already zip back? Okay, that, uh, that worked out incredibly well. Uh, draft on draft. Everyone get back to work. Oh, we should build a reliquary, reliquary for that rifle. And Ferret has gone berserk. And uh, we should probably find a way to kill the Ferret. In fact, that should make them guilty. That should make killing them much easier. And let's get a few people down there to beat him down. Okay, that's another exotic guild trader. And I don't think the last one has actually left range somehow. Um, right, we just have lots of exotic guild traders for no apparent reason. <sighs> Never mind. Uh, we are going to put a reliquary in here so that we can install our legendary charge rifle. Uh, we could equip someone with it, but I want to see what happens if we install it into our place. We're supposed to get visitors who come along to like look at it. I am really curious to see if that's how it works out, because if we get visitors out here, it's a bit chilly. They might not survive. Looking through the copious amount of things we can possibly build, we do have a steel reliquary we can stick down in there. In fact, we can even build sleep accelerators because that pawn we're trying to get rid of here is actually a member of Neo-Loyalism. Which, yeah, they're transhumanists, so we could build sleep accelerators, though I don't think we want to invest the power. If we want to go tra full as transhumanist, we'd need to double our power. I'm not sure I'm willing to go that far. I I I'd prefer some sort of weather modifier that makes our, uh, our wind turbines a little bit more productive. Oh, and uh, we have... Disconnected the power grid again, just in case there's any more Zist events anytime soon. And, all right, let's see what we've got here. Word of Serenity. Just a stun. No, I don't want any of those. I want invisibility. Give me invisibility. I am beginning to wonder who sells low shield packs, but I haven't seen any of those. Uh, we don't really have much to sell. We only have some wake-up we got from the, well, we made out of the last batch of Neutronamine we bought. But more Neutronamine, Glitter World Medicine, Psychic Insanity, Lance and a Shock Lance. I want some Glitter World Medicine. We can use that in the uh, the Biosculptor pods for things. And yeah, let's, let's drag all of that stuff inside. And all of those as well. Someone will find a use for them. We actually have, everyone's almost got a special on them. And we've got three or four jump jet packs and then a whole bunch of everything else going on. Giraffe has been enslaved. Ah! Excellent. Uh, time for you to go punch a warg. Now, before we deal with giraffe for the warg punching, we're going to get our prime rifle. It turns out you can just right-click this and install in reliquary. And... boom. I don't know exactly what that changes. Um, damn it, I put it in the wrong place, didn't I? I should have put it in here. Well, I'm a Muppet. Uh, yeah, we need to actually move a bunch of things around. I say we need four of these things in here, so put those there. Move the statues up one notch, and uh, you can reinstall those two there. And we'll move the reliquary over. But uh, that means we still have to begin a public execution here and get rid of... No, no, it's giraffe we want to get rid of. Yeah, they're the one who's guilty. Damn it. I want to actually try this, though... Mm, I want to try one of these things, but with 
the actual relic re around. So I think we'll hold that one more minute until we've got the relic re in. While I was busy micromanaging the few things over here, it turns out we've got a bulk goods trader for oh, the first time in I don't know how long. Excellent. Uh. 23% is Casey. Yeah, so you're going to call them. Once once you get the, the the slave back to the prisoner section. Now, what are we going to do with these two? Oh, yeah, we're going to have a big public execution in a second. Once we see what the bulk goods trader has to offer. You have any stone? Got any stone, buddy? Ah, sandstone blocks. We can grab a thousand of those. We don't need any of those. I think we're good on all the tech print fronts, so we've got literally every single tech print done. Let's clean them out of anything that might be useful. Pretty deep, decent shopping spree. We took out all their advanced components to Chodamine, and I finally remember to start buying those Psychic Foil Helmets. They'll help us out next time a Psychic Drone hits. Uh, though I do need to find some storage spots for that, and I've just realized that the, uh, the Toxic Fallout's gone. I don't know when that happened, but it appears to have. Alright, that means we can start going back outside and mining. I have been going easy on that for a while because, well, I didn't want everyone getting, you know, Toxic Fallout burns, or, like, there's no sunscreen for that sort of stuff. All right, let's get back to actually doing what we were meant to be doing. So, public execution it is. Totvidas is going to do it because, well, we want everyone to like Totvidas, and a good execution will make the, well, it'll improve their social with everyone. Now, let's see what happens here if we do this. Supposedly, having a reliquary where you do things uh, improves the happiness of everyone involved in the ritual. So, someone want to grab the prisoner? Oh, Totvidas is on the way. I think they're right mining. Okay. Symbolism of death, yet yeah, the usual. Yeah, necessity of justice, satisfying public execution. Everyone participating gains plus six mood. Is that it? Yeah, guilty prisoner executed. Well, they also get a plus three from a guilty prisoner executed. That's a plus nine. I also want to keep some prisoners around just for those mood boosts when you need them. So I think everyone is got some loving at this point. Got some loving by four, got some loving by three. Uh... Wait, how, oh, no, got some loving by one, got some loving by three, killed someone by five. Well, close enough. Who is that? That is Petra Massimo. Wait, oh, they also got some loving and they killed people, so they're super happy. Got some loving by four, got some loving by four, by four, killed someone by five. Uh, no, got some loving, though. Who is that? Daniel Talty. I think Daniel, yeah, Daniel hasn't hooked up on anyone yet. Uh, Jeremy, got some loving. Uh, Totvidas, yeah, Totvidas, also someone who hasn't got a, a partner just yet. Got some loving by four, got some loving by five, got some loving by five, got some loving by three, got some loving by four, got some loving by three, and got some loving by four. I think, I think this is probably the happiest colony I've ever had. Look at that, it's just green all across the board. All right then. Well, excellent. Totvidas, uh, pursued Gus by telling a story about making top hats, probably out of the person they just executed, and they responded well. So Gus and Totvidas are now on the same page. So yeah, executions in this colony seems are very, very powerful. Uh, we need to move Totvidas's bed in here then. Uh, yep, you can enjoy the benefits of living in there, though we're going to need to get another colonist to... Oh. Yeah, no, I'm going back to this spreadsheet, but I don't think there's any way we can work this just yet. Now, that leaves Daniel as the only one outside of a relationship in the group, and a quick execution for them should improve their social with everyone. Yeah, they're very well liked after. It's a plus 20 social for that, as far as I'm aware. Uh, for example, if we just grab Jarek here, and we go find Daniel under here, and let's see, executed prisoner. Actually, they've done it twice, plus 35. All right, so hopefully Daniel will hook up with someone soon. All I have to do, say a few words, should be good to go. Oh, and uh, yeah, we, we nicked some stuff while we were abroad, including all the chairs, and I'd like to find a use for them. Uh, where are we going to install these dining chairs? Not really great, but I mean, we can't let them go to waste. We stole them. Well, a quest has shown up that I'm kind of interested in. A 79-year-old test subject named Peter is calling nearby. Profaned a peace ritual type thing, offers to join us, but if he does, the kinship of... Braga and the Greybush Union will raid us in four days. Um, thing is, looking at this, the kinship of Braga are down here. They are savage tribals, and the Greybush Union are cannibal tribal. So, both tribals? I would more than happily butcher a whole bunch of tribals for fun. So, yeah, I say we accept that quest. That sounds like a good time. Uh, come on, Pete, in and join us. In fact, it's the middle of December. December, yeah, rare so, yes, they can hit us now. And that means most of the, a whole bunch of them should freeze. And you, Cataphract Helmet. No, let's see what your bio is. Psychopath, Industrious, and Sanguine? Okay, but you're incapable of, like, just about everything. 
dementia, hearing loss, hearing loss, <laughs> frail, bad back. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think it's hats for you, buddy. You're shivering? Let's hope you make it back before you freeze to death. Uh, we wouldn't want you to die uh, prematurely. That would that would cause everyone to actually be a little bit sad. Our newest recruit did collapse, but we managed to carry them into a bed. They, they recovered. They punched a warg. They got executed. Uh, no one cared. And now Daniel is should be even more liked by people. Actually, what's the other that? Oh my god, the blood. Yeah, they're they're bloodlusting as well. So they're going to be super happy. And everyone is now up to fifty to sixty. Like the lowest people are Petro Massimo and Intern Zero at forty six social. You only need twenty social for someone to have the potential to accept a request to become a, a lover, marriage, that type of stuff. So I think we're good right there. All right, uh, let's do a few more things to get prepped. Uh, namely, ripping up this floor. I just need to realize we have loads of stone here, and if we're going to stay here a bit longer, we should probably prep to expand, well, double our power production. Uh, how's everyone looking on the helmet front? I think helmet-wise, we're good. I'm going to have to double-check to make sure everyone's got at least a masterwork helmet. We are slowly grinding up a few more helmets and things, but I think we're going to do another quick festival here. We can do the Festival of Mahanyana. Now, depending on ritual quality, we can get some good stuff. If it's beautiful or unforgettable, the Sky Lanterns might attract a group of friendly visitors. Which I think is hilarious considering the temperature. So, let's give it a go. I mean, 99 out of 19 is 100%. What happens if we get rid of someone? Uh, we don't need everyone for 100 You know what? Everyone can have some time off. We need at least one Truth Mahatist participating. Wait, what? Uh... Oh god, that's... It's one of these guys. It's one of, it's one of the slaves we've got. Uh, that slave can't move either. The problem being they've got Psychite Withdrawal and Smoke Leaf Withdrawal and an old Torso... They're not in, in a good mood. I'll tell you what, though. If we apply a little bit of Go Juice, what's the bets they suddenly get up and we might be able to hold this festival? Or, may, or maybe not. Who knows? Um, Are they up and about? Yeah. They are up and about. Let's see if we can hold this festival. I, I doubt it. Yes. Yep. Yep, we can. Let, let's do it. Come on, buddy. Oh, I think everyone needs a little bit of wood for this one. You know what? I'm okay with that. This is going to be weird, considering this is not one of our festivals. How is everyone feeling about this, actually? Eh. Grand. Oh, marriage is on. Tree has proposed a lifelong commitment to Valiant. New lovers. Charlie has tried to attract Valiant. Wait, so Tree and Valiant are now getting married, and then Valiant has hooked up with Charlie five seconds later. Yep, this colony is just the best. Hey guys, what you doing? Oh, that's lovely. And there it goes. Perfect, is it done? Ah, uh, oh my god. Okay, so Daniel, Talty, and Sarah have now hooked up. Oh my god, I'm going to need to do up a second spreadsheet just to figure out what happened after the first spreadsheet. But still... Wait, wait. Daniel Talty was... Yeah, that means Daniel Talty's in on it now as well. Alright, if I rearrange this, I should be able to fit everyone in this room now. Ah, excellent. Alright, oh, and Trogo. What's wrong with you, buddy? Okay. I think it's time... Well, I mean, thanks for the festival. It was wonderful. It was a beautiful festival. Gained 10 goodwill with the Aurelia Confederation. I have no idea who those are and I don't care. Everyone got plus 6 mood. And for your reward, well, let's just say your afterlife's going to be, um... Yeah, never mind. Oh, Slim is out of the box. I think it's time Slim went back in. Bioregeneration, no. Begin age reversal cycle again. 5.9 days. Okay, they will enter the biosculpting pot. What is their age right now? They're down to 67. Well, that's great. We just got to get them down like about another 17 years if we want to keep them around the place. The problem is they're just so old that I'm worried that any birthday could potentially give them something really nasty. I'm, I'm trying to do the relationships and it's hurting my brain so much trying to figure this out. This is this is fun, but painful. I don't know how to describe it. Like, wait, we go over here, Daniel. Daniel is dating Sarah, right? That's it. There, there's literally their only choices. So we have to have Daniel and Sarah as a couple in a bed. Totvidas, the same. Grey Ghost, the same. So that means those six people, they have to happen. There's no way around it. Then, of course, we've got, say, Unbreakable and Intern Zero. 
Uh, this is where thing kind of, things kind of get weird. You see, Intern Zero only has two choices, one of which is Sarah. But Sarah's not a choice because she's already locked in with Daniel. So Intern Zero can't be in the same bed as Sarah. So Intern Zero has to go with Unbreakable, which means that's another... Those eight have to happen. There's no way around that rant. So then from there on in, let's say, go with Casey over here. Now, Casey can't go with Gus because Gus is already tied up with Totvidas. Casey can't go with Sarah because Sarah's already tied up with Daniel. That means Casey has to go with Ralph. Okay, so, yep, right, Grant. So that's that's Casey over here, and that gets Ralph, but that takes Ralph out of the relationship they're currently in and leaves uh, Daryl on their own. Now, uh, if we go to Daryl, oh my god, okay, so Daryl can't go with Ralph. Uh, they can't go with Petro Massimo, so that means they have to go with Valiant because Petro Massimo is already tied up in a relationship and so is Ralph. So that means... Daryl goes over here, then we're going to hook them up with Valiant, right? So Valiant can't be with Tree anymore. Okay, and as you can see, it's already hurting my brain even more than it should. Okay, so we go and find Tree. Damn it, where are you, Tree? All right, so Tree only has Valiant, which means Tree is now going to be on their own. Ah, damn it. So yes, this is a fail so far. We need someone else to hook up with someone else. Uh, let me think for a second, though. I need to make this tidier, or make, or put everyone back the way they were. Or, I could realize that I am ten minutes over, like, the hour already, and I should probably stop this episode. But, uh, a couple of things. Well, I want to try and figure out where I'm going to take the episode to end it. Normally I have a plan at this point, but I can't really think of anything. I've got a couple of things that I would like to try, or potentially do. One would be, go with the Archonexus quest. This means we would take five people, and with those five people, we would move on and have to start another map from scratch. We can bring a bunch of uh, animals with us and a few bits and bobs, but we'd basically be starting over with just five pawns, which would be interesting, and we then have to do that one more time. So we'd be sort of power leveling five pawns into absolute monsters would be the theory. We'd, of course, be taking Slim, though Slim's going to need maybe some more regens. She's kind of old already, so what? She's been in this for six and a half years, so we'd have to de-age her back to at least 60, maybe, maybe even 55, so it'd still take a little bit of time. So I was thinking of that. Do the Archonexus quest and do the Archonexus ending. Second would be do Save Our Ships. It's a, a mod where you actually build a ship and then take that ship into space and do some space killing. Which also seems kind of interesting to me. And the third one would be, well, we'd go full transhumanist. We'd have to double our power grid, switch everyone over to transhumanist. Then once we've got everyone in, like, maxed out cataphract armor, helmets and all that stuff, we'd turn off uh, the threat limiter. As in, currently we're limited to 10,000 points on raids, or the raid threat modifier, whatever it is. We'd basically get rid of that, and then we would get swamped in raids until we die from it. There would be no survival. It would be, we would just be so wealthy that the raids would be enormous, and we'd eventually get cracked and broken. So, yeah, they're, they're just three I'm thinking of. Either Archonexus ending, Save Our Ships ending, or Massive Burnout as Transhumanists. Uh, either or. Anyway, I am going to cut this out here for the day. I think we'll start making our decision on that uh, somewhere closer to, like, Thursday, Friday. Uh, hopefully I can add a channel update this week as well. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Thank you.